upload earlier today. I'm hopeful that it'll continue work. Uh, the only difficulty has been our internet phones at the school have been going on and off all day, so that means there's something wrong here with the network. So if not, I'll try at home. I hope to have this up by seven at the latest. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, if all goes well. A math teacher who's even nerdier than me, yes, there are out there, believe it or not, he put this t-shirt together for his kids. So he called it Hollywood Meets Mathematics. They had movie titles. Number one was Radians of the Lost Ark. Number two was Permutations of a Dangerous Mind. Three was Dude, Where's My Conic? Four was Return of the Red Eye. Five was American Pie. Six was, uh, that's 50 first dates in base three, for those of you who know your bases. Seven was Seinfeld. Eight was Finding Numeral. Does anybody know what uh, number nine is? A movie that came out a couple of years ago called The Thin Red Line, which is the line what? The line Y equals X, of course, which is what the inverse flips around, which you'll start remembering when you start reviewing for your final exam. <laughs> What's that one? What, Lorenz? E.T., very good. When you simplify that, you'll find that's E.T. I'm quite impressed. Out of nowhere, I'm impressed, my friend. What's this one? It was a TV show that was on, might have been, I think it was still on when you were young kids. It had two famous twins, had two twins on it that have now made their own little children's Huh? That is the combinatorics for a full house. From 13 suits, choose one. From three of those, four of those cards, choose three. So this is from Brad Epps, students in Kamloops. Number nine is the thin red line, and number 11 is full house. Anyways, there's your humor. Now back to real life. Let's do some math. All right. Basic rules of thumb I would give you. Read the questions very, very, very carefully. I'm going to tell you right now, there are questions, card questions, where I say uh, not just red card, not just black card, but red face card, or black face card, or red ace, or black ace. And for some reason, I find kids just miss that last word. They see the word red, or they see the word black. Um, this was Eric Bing's only mistake when he was taking Math 12 as a grade 11 student on this test. He read a question wrong. He just saw the first word and didn't see the two words describing the cards and was mortified to find that he'd read the question wrong. So read the questions carefully. Okay. Second hint I would give you is ask yourself how many events are there. If there's more than two Probably you don't want to do a tree. Probably you want to do some kind of a bucket. Well, that's a lie. Savannah, three, right at three, I'm willing to draw a tree still. If there's more than three, I'm not drawing a tree. If it's two dice, what will you do? What will your strategy be? I heard it back there. Okay, chart, right? If it's two dice, you draw a chart. Um, certainly, if there's eight or nine or ten or twelve events, it's either a bucket or it's a binome PDF. And you have to identify by asking yourself, do the odds change every time? Then it's a bucket, like cards. Or, you know what, if the odd never changes from attempt to attempt, then it's a binomial probability distribution. And you need to know how to use the binome PDF as well as the longer version of it. Okay? Going to tell you on your multiple choice a couple of questions because I'm trying to also think about if any of this showed up on the non-calculator section of the provincial, what would they ask? I've given you a couple of questions where I'm not actually asking for the number. I'm giving you the mathematical expression to pick from on the multiple choice. So I'll say, which of the following, I'm making this up, which of the following could be used to calculate the probability of getting two hearts in a row? And rather than actually do the number, I've done the, the fractions or the chooses or whatever. Okay? So make sure you can handle that. Make sure you can move from calculator approach to, oh, here's just the simplified uh, factorial approach. Which one do I want to go with? You need to be able to recognize both. All right? So first off, I'll begin by saying from the probability review, 
Are there any you want me to go over? There are some nasties on here. I did steal some of these from the Alberta Provincial Exam. So this first group I stole from August 2003. But you will notice a little further on, basically in the final third, these are from the Alberta exam, uh, where it stops having little headings. I think that's the Alberta Provincial. I think number 19 is the last one that's actually from a BC Provincial. The rest are from the Alberta exam. And I've already said for combinatorics, probably they go a little further than we do. I'm good with that on the review, because the whole goal is you should find the test much easier than the review assignment, right? So questions you would like me to go over. Also, please remember that I did put my solution key online. So if you're stuck, I did try and really show my steps on these. Which ones would you like me to do? Yeah. 15, 1, 5. Okay. Good question. I like this one, not because I like this one, I like this one, I like this, just because this really lets me cover a big chunk of what we spent the first four lessons of probability on. Okay. How many cards? Okay, tree. This one's a bit tricky, though. Because what's the first event? The probably the first card is a what? And the second card is a? That second probability depends. Because in this case, some face cards are also queens. Okay? So here's what I think I'm going to do with my tree. My notation is going to be I'll use the letter F for face card. I'll use the letter Q for queen. Okay, well, here's how I'd break this up. Queen on the first draw, even though they didn't mention it. Face card, but not a queen on the fa first draw. Neither face card nor queen on the first draw. The problem with this one is I have to take into account that a queen is also a face card, but if I got a queen on the first draw, that does satisfy the first event, but that totally changes the odds of the second event because I'm holding a queen already. So I think I'm going to break it up like that. By the way, what are the odds of getting a queen on your first draw? Out of? Four out of 52, so this I expect all you'll be able to handle. How many face cards are there in the deck? There's 12. Uh, how many of them are queens? Four. So how many non-queen face cards are there? Out of? Yep. No, no, 8 out of 52 still. See the 12 face cards here? Okay. How many others? You know what? I'm not even going to bother filling this in because it tells me that it wants the first card to be a face card. I'm going to leave this branch blank. It's going to be a waste of my time. <laughs> now, yeah, on a written, I would never do that. On a written, I would fill in the entire tree. Multiple choices. I don't get any marks for the tree. If you're not using one of the branches and you're pretty confident, leave that branch empty. Now let's keep going. Queen on the second. Not queen on the second. Queen on the second, not queen on the second. Down this branch here, we picked a queen. By the way, I guess hopefully by now you've clued in. Remember at the beginning I said trees were very, very useful. This is a fairly nasty question, but I'm going to get it to fall apart with a tree, I'm pretty sure. How many queens are left in the deck? Three out of 51. I know this one here would be 47, I don't care. Or 48 out of 51, I still don't care. Uh, here, we didn't get a queen. We got a face card, though, like a jack, let's say. How many queens are left in the deck? Out of? Now, here's my argument. Both of these branches satisfy the condition. Both of those branches have a face card as the first draw. Queen or other, it's still a face card. And a queen on the second. It's one or the other. What does or mean? And multiply down, add across. This answer is going to be, you might have got a queen first, queen second, or a non-queen face card first. 
between second. I have no idea what the answer is, but that's that's what it'll be. I would consider that a reasonably tough. Uh, to me, that's a B plus level question. Although I think once I started going, I saw most of you kind of say, "Oh, I see." Just separate because there's some overlap. Separate the two cases. Is that right? I hope. I don't know what the answer is, but oh, what is the answer? A. Okay. Nice little question. And I like that. Just that really combined lesson one, two, three, and I think four as well. Okay. Nastier question would be, uh, given that you have a queen, what's the probability that the first card was not a queen, but a face card? You could do uh, be both over the given one. So I that's what why I, for the conditional probability questions, I really just in my mind always say to myself if they use the word given or suppose or if, and they're talking, they're telling me which branch I am down here and want me to work my way backwards. It's always both over the given one. That mathematically works for me way better than that creepy formula that I always get the wrong letters for. Anyways, next twenty two zero. Okay, this is from the Alberta exam, and I don't like this question, but I still talked about it. Parts of this I like, but as an entire question, bleh. okay. So let me copy it. I've debated actually taking it off this review, except I did this review on a Mac computer, so I only have a PDF file of this on my tablet, so I can't edit it, and it would mean retyping the whole thing. And as much as I like you guys, you aren't worth that. So that'd be about 40 hours of work. No, thank you. Ready? It says, uh, two students performed a simulation that rec uh, recorded flipping three coins, and they did 10 trials. So this is the actual trial. First of all, what's the probability of getting three heads on a single trial? So let's see. Uh, or sorry, part A. There is no A that appeared there. A. What's the experimental probability of getting three heads on a single trial? Did I get three heads there? No, no. One? No, no. Two. Uh, the experimental probability is apparently two out of ten. I don't think that's the correct answer. Now, if you did this a hundred times, you'd get a much more accurate experimental probability, although nothing would prevent you from getting three heads in a row one hundred times. Is that likely? No. Is it impossible? No. Oh, but if you did a thousand times, you'd be even more accurate with your actual versus the theoretical. Although, again, nothing would prevent you from... Okay. Uh, as I'm looking at this, they're talking about flipping a coin. Heads or tails? Do the odds ever change? I think this is a binomial. In fact, I think on any one of these trials, I think it would be binome PDF... And I'll fill in this stuff. I'll do the choose one here. It would be from three flips, because you're flipping a coin three times on each trial. Choose how many heads do you want? Three. What's the odds of getting heads? One half. How many heads do you want? Three. What's the odds of getting tails? One half. How many tails do you want? Zero. In fact, you know what? I don't need to go all fancy, because what's three choose three? One. What's a half to the zero? I think I could use binomial PDF, but I'm pretty sure I can get there just by going 0.5 to the third power. 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5. Can someone do that? Point 0.125. Now, if I did use binomial PDF, I would go three flips. The odds of success is one half or 0.5. How many successes? How many heads? Uh, three. And I'm pretty sure that would also give you 0.125. Uh, by the way, Savannah, what's two tenths as a decimal? Two tenths as a decimal? 0.2. So they got a way they got way too high a percentage. The actual theoretical percentage is 0.125. Okay. C. Now, C says, by the way, here was the other reason that I kind of clued in this as a binomial probability distribution, because what does it say in part B, or part C? Use the what? Ah, okay. 
binome PDF. Okay. Now the question is changing just a tiny bit. This is the odds of getting three heads on one trial. Okay. How many trials do they want me to do here? So it's going to be 10, comma. Now the odds of success on an entire trial is not one half. That was the odds of success flipping one coin. What are the odds of getting three heads on one trial? What's the odds of success? That's what's going to go here. And they want exactly two three heads. The other reason I don't like this question is it's very easy to get mixed up with numbers because you have the odds of success of a single heads of a single trial. I, I to be honest, I might have called this trial A, B, C, D instead of calling it trial one through ten. I don't know. Anyways, that should be the answer. I don't know what the answer is, but that should be it. Or uh, ten choose two, point one two five to the two, uh, one minus point one two five, point eight seven five to the eight. Ten choose two, point one two five, two point eight seven five to the eight. Is that okay? Those will both get you there. Although this is a written question, this won't be a written question you'll see on your test. And remind me before I let you guys go, I'll give you a hint as to what kind of questions are great written questions. Any others? Pretty sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 19B. I probably have to do A in order to do B. Just me guessing. <laughs> Okay, let me copy it, and let me also say, I love this question, I love this question, I love this question. And what I mean by that, I'm going to tell you right now, on your written, there's going to be a question that involves two jars of marbles or something. Um, I may also, instead of right now picking each jar, oh no, they did roll a die as well, I kind of like that. Or they could have you pick each jar 50-50, but here they rolled a die. Um, I have to set up a tree and walk through part A before I can give you a good answer for part B, and then I'll answer your question for part B, because you're wondering about how you know which is the given, right? Yeah, given. given what? So it's going to be given white no. Eric Bing didn't find that mistake. Are you serious? I made a mistake? I'm mortified if I did. I got A and white. I got given that it's white. Given that it's white. Is that what it says online? I think it should be. I think I'm right. Okay, let's walk through the whole thing. Okay, um, before I get to their tree. So we have two events. Pick a jar, pick a marble. Okay. The other way that I can do this is uh, instead of having you pick a jar, pick two marbles from one jar. Jar one, jar two, red, white, red, white. To pick a jar, it's not 50-50. Instead, it looks like it's going to be two out of six and four out of six because we're rolling a die. Y'all okay with where I got that? Sam, how many red balls are there in jar A? How many red marbles? Out of? And 7 out of 12. In jar B, 8 out of? And? Out of 12. So part A, find the probability that a white is selected. Part A is going to be that branch or that branch. It's going to be 2 6 times 7 twelfths. 2 over 6 
times 7 over 12 plus 4 over 6 times 4 over 12. 6 times 12 is 72. I think it's going to be 14 plus 16. Is it 30 over 72? I think that's what you get. Is that right? And then divide by 6. 5 out of 12. Is that what I said the answer was in my answer key? Yes, I did. Okay. Now let's go through yours. Yeah. Got it? Okay. Let's continue. B. So, Kayla, whenever I see the term given or suppose or if, I always ask myself, if what? Suppose what? Given what? Given that it's white. Find the probability that it came from jar A. And what I've told you is that's going to be both, I'll write A and W, just like the restaurant, all divided by the given one, W. Okay? Now, the given one, W, we've already done right here because didn't we figure out the probability that it's white? That won't always be the case. In fact, I think on your test for one of the questions, I didn't walk you through part A. I just went straight to part B as your question. There was no part A, part B. I simply said, blah, 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 blah. Given that, and I launched right into the conditional, and I'm assuming that you're going to figure out, oh, I better, it's both over the given one. Calculator mistake, Kayla? Okay, um, A and W, A, what did I say, jar 1 and jar 2, I should have said jar A and jar B, that's silly, uh, A and W, that's going to be 2 out of 6 times 7 out of 12, and I get 14 out of 72, divided by 5 out of 12. How do I divide by a fraction, flip and multiply? Or you can go straight to your calculator. You want to be careful. If you're going to your calculator, you can't go 14 divided by 72 divided by 5 divided by 12. It doesn't know that that's one fraction. You've got to use brackets. You're not going to get the right answer. You need to go 14 over 72 in brackets divided by bracket 5 over 12. That's how it knows you're going one fraction divided by another fraction. And then if you hit math, enter, enter, you find the answer is 7 over 15. Okay. You're totally going to see something like that on your test, something along those lines. Next. 22. Okay. Who asked 22? Sorry, I just heard the... Did you look at my answer key at all or no? I'll walk you through it on there. So here's what I said. This is, by the way, from the Alberto one. This is probably a little trickier than we feel comfortable asking you. Here's what I said. Here's the total number of ways to mix up the letters in the word Canada. Six letters divided by three A's. Six factorial over three factorial. I said the total number of permutations is 120. And that's permutations with no repetitions because I divided by 3 factorial. How many of those will spell Canada? One. It's one out of 120. Um, I didn't go too fancy there. And I kind of think outside of the box. My usual methods didn't really work, but I said I can, if I can count it, I can figure it out. Let's fall back on day one when we define probability. The total number of successes divided by the total number of outcomes. Is that okay? You can make it there? Yeah. Next. 30. Ah, the mice.
Okay. I'm not going to copy the picture because that's not going to fit on my screen. So we're looking at number 30. Who asked 30? Kayla, you did? I'm looking at the answers that they gave me, the 0, the 1, and the 2. Fractions or decimals? Looking at the answers that they gave me, the 0, the 1, and the 2, these ones here. Fractions or decimals? I'm already kind of wondering if this is some kind of weird binom PDF type thing because it's the four decimal places. It's kind of looking like some of the answers that I wrote. That Let's find out. Okay. So we have yellow mice are genetic mutants, and their breeding produces offspring that may not su survive. Of the offspring that do survive, one-third are gray. So zero out of four are gray. If this was a binomial probability distribution, it would go like this. Binome PDF from four mouse. What's the probability of a gray mouse? Comma. How many mice do we want to be gray in this first one here? See if that works out to 0.1975. Let's find out. Four comma one third comma zero. Ah, it does. You know what? This is a binomial probability distribution function. Now, how did I figure that out? Um, how many mouse mice grand total? Four. Not a tree. Okay, so I eliminated that. Then I said, so this is either a bucket or a binome. Um, do the odds change? I don't think so. I don't think whether or not the previous mouse was gray has any effect over whether or not the next one breeds gray or not. So I said, you know, I think the odds don't change. And I said, if nothing else, I'll at least try it because it takes five seconds to type it into my calculator. <laughs> now my guess is confirmed. And I suspect this question, this was on the Alberta exam, was considered a little too tough. And so to make it easier, they said, hey, why don't we give them a couple of the answers, and that way they can kind of check to see if they've guessed right. Okay, now let's keep going. Uh, three out of four. This would be binome PDF of four comma one third comma three. Point zero nine eight eight. And four out of four is going to be binome PDF. 4 comma 1 third comma 4 could have just gone second function enter Mr. Duke uh, point zero one two three point zero one two three four five six seven eight I'm guessing I'm assuming there's a 9 over here and the calculator rounded an 8 up to a 9. It's kind of an odd probability, but I think that's the answer, so I hope. Okay. You see how I put all that together? I, I, I kind of tied together a lot of little hints in the question. And you know what else I didn't do? I didn't let the wordiness of this question overwhelm me. So I'm got to be able to do this. Oh, they gave me some answers. Let's see if I can get the same numbers as them somehow using the skills that I have. Next, 34, okay, 34 I do like, I think this is fair game, this would be an Alberta question that I'm totally good with. How many power plants grand total? 11, tree? No, no. So this is either bucket or binomial. Let's see. It says the probability that any one will not be functioning is 0.1 and exactly 3. This is the wording of a binomial question, I'm pretty sure. And I think the probability of success is 0.1. Probability of failure is 0.9. Let me copy this puppy. Hey, what are some triggers that would be final? 
Uh, how many power plants? That's one. Right? It's not a tree. Process of elimination. So if it's not a tree, it's either a bucket, like using combinatorics, or binome. So the, the real trigger then is you ask, do the odds change here or not? If, if the odds never change from step to step, it's binome PDF. If the odds change, like in a card question, oh, I picked a queen, and now there's only three left in the deck. I picked another queen, now there's only two left in the deck. That's a bucket. Choose. Uh, this is going to be... Binome PDF 11, comma, point 0.1, comma, 3. Or 11 choose 3, point 0.1 to the third, point 0.9 to the eighth. Eleven, comma point one, comma three. Uh, D. Is that a hand up, Caitlin? Are you hitting Regan? Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. This one was tough. 33 was yucky. Uh, 33 is yucky enough, Priya. I'm just going to go to my answer key. Okay. So here's what I said. Um, child has two quarters, two dimes, and three nickels. He's picking two coins. I probably could have done this with a tree, but I had a tough time wrapping my brain around it. I said, well, look, if I have two dimes, two quarters, and three nickels, and the question wants me, is asking, what's the probability that the two coins that I select will have a total value at least above 35 cents? I thought about it. I looked at all the coins that I had, and I said, you know what? There's only two ways I can break 35. The two ways that I can break 35 are two quarters, or I can tie it, quarter and a dime. Any other combination of coins is less than 35 cents. Think about it for a while, but try it. You'll just find nothing else works. So I said, you know what? I think this question really is wanting me to find the probability of two quarters, or, what does or mean? At a uh, quarter and a dime. So then I said, I can do this as, as a bucket. From two quarters to choose two, uh, from two dimes, choose none. From three nickels, choose none. That's that one. Or, from two quarters, choose one. From two dimes, choose one. From two nickels, choose none. Uh, all of these are over seven, choose two. Double check. Plus, plus, seven, plus, plus, two. Plus, 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 seven, plus, plus, two. Having said that, I think you could have done it as a now as a tree. Quarter on the first, not quarter on the first. Sorry, quarter on the first, dime on the first, nickel on the first, and then quarter dime nickel, quarter dime nickel, quarter dime nickel. You'd have uh, three times three to nine branches at the bottom. It's doable. And then simply put a check mark under whichever ones are above thirty-five cents. And that would also get you there. <laughs> Uh, so Steph is asking, will there be a question? I guarantee there will be an at least or an at most question. Okay. So instead of this, which is a bit confusingly worded, I would have no problem, for example, saying uh, if you're picking two, uh, picking four cards, what's the probability that you get at least three jacks, which would mean three or four? Yeah. I will in just a second. Okay. So yes, for uh, absolutely at least or at most or more than or less than kinds of questions, fewer than. 35? Yeah, 35 I like. I think so. <coughs> so 
So, Pat, here's the answer to your question, kiddo. Okay? Read the question to yourself. I'm pretty sure I said to yourself. Okay. Yeah. How many boxes are we looking at? One. How many candies in a box? How many? Three? Okay, so this is either binome or choose. says the probability the black candy is produced is 0.12. Does this seem to suggest that the odds change at all? I think this is a binomial probability distribution function. Because I can't think of a way where it would be like, like I think it's just whether the machine uh, you know, puts that candy in there or not. Okay. Uh, Laura, what's the case that we have here? What do they want us to find? The probability that it contains what? No, 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 no. Did I go on a rant earlier about being careful to read the questions? Very, very carefully. At least five. That's a hugely important. What does at least five mean? What are the cases? I'll give you a hint. Five. At least five. Okay, you ready? Because if we can't do the vocabulary, we're not going to be able to do the math. Five or, 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 or. All the way up to 60, clearly they don't want me to do that. I think they want me to use the complement and the CDF function. So here's what I would do. Probability of 5 or more, that's 1 minus the probability of 4 or less. It's going to be 1 minus the binome C, because we're doing the cumulative, we want an or less cumulative distribution function of uh, 60 candies, 0.12 chance of getting a black candy, 4 or less because we're using cumulative. One minus And I'm CDF of 60, comma, 0.12, comma, 4. The odds of getting more than 5, pretty good. 86%. The nearest hundredth, sorry, 0 0.861. 86.1%. Does that seem right? Well, 0.12, if the odds of, uh, we've got five candidates making 60 boxes, and then the odds are about 10% each time. So on average, I would expect out of 60 boxes, there would be around six. Here we got five. Yeah, you know what? I'm okay with that answer. Looks about right to me, give or take. Next. Come on, Mr. Duke, wake up. Number 30. 33? 23, 2, 3. Okay. Hockey arena? This one? Okay. So, hockey arena is, has seating that's divided into sections, lettered from A to Z inclusive and AA to XX inclusive. So, each section consists of 20 rows with 16 seats in each row. At a sold-out hockey game, it's announced that a prize will be given to a person sitting in section J day. What's the odds that you win a prize? So here's what I said.
There are 26 rows times 16 seats. There are a total of 320 seats in section double J. The odds of you winning is 1 in 320. If they're giving one prize away and I'm in that section, I would look around who all is around me and I got one chance out of that many. Again, that's a bit of a strangely worded one. Next. Okay, then a few hints. Here's what you're going to see on your written section, in no particular order. A Venn diagram question. How do you recognize a Venn diagram question? Often percentages. Only two outcomes, categories, fill in the middle, or, sorry, fill in the middle, which is both and the overlap, or put a ve uh, an X there and work your way out to solve for x. <laughs> Guarantee one of those. Guarantee a bucket card question. So instead of just two cards, which you can tree your way to, five or seven or something like that. Please read carefully. Uh, going to be at least one at most or at least kind of question. List the cases. If there's only a couple of them, yeah, do them individually, add them up. If there's a bunch, like 10, you can probably complement your way by going one minus the other number, the other option, the other outcome. Conditional probability. It's either going to be bag of marbles factory defective question factory A and factory B 30% are made at factory A 70% are made at factory B 60% of factory B's are defective, 40% of factory A's. What's the probability, given that it's defective, that it came from factory A or factory B? Um, B 
disease question, the Lifesaver one. The uh, test was 98% accurate, but as it turned out, the person only had a 65% chance of having the disease at a better than 1 in 3 chance of not having it, which are way better odds than 1%. Or the other one I've seen has been a conditional condi conditional binome PDF. Caitlin, the probability that Caitlin plays with her hair in any one minute is 80%. Given that she's played with her hair six times in the last ten minutes, what's the probability that she's played with her hair eight times in the last ten minutes? Given that she's played with her hair at least six times in the last ten minutes, what's the probability that she's played with her hair eight, eight times? Making up a question. You didn't like that one. Heard me? I did make that up. hundred percent. Okay. Binome PDF and binome CDF. Also make sure you know the choose notation as well. What's the choose notation? And choose x, p to the x, q to the 1 minus x. But with numbers there. Uh, make sure you know on your calculator it's binome PDF of n comma p comma x. That's the syntax. You need to know how to use that stuff. The written is pretty short. The written only has five questions. Most of this test is multiple choice. How many multiple choice questions, Mr. Dutt? 14. So 14 multiple choice. Other things you need to know. Terminology. There are two key terms that we've used. Mutually exclusive and independent. What does mutually exclusive mean? Ah, that's it. That's the best non-math definition. No overlap. Pat, what it also means is this. The probability of A and B is what? If you know two atoms are mutually exclusive, what's the probability of A and B occurring at the same time? No. They're overcomplicating it. If there's no overlap, what's the probability of A and B occurring at the same time? Nothing. Can't happen because there's no overlap. It's saying in your Venn diagram, the very, very middle part has nothing in it. Okay. Uh, what about independent? Well, that meant the odds... don't change what I really said is a built-in handy-dandy check is if you're doing a tree
A, not A, B, not B, B, not B. If they are independent, this number and this number will match. Because what it's saying is, hey, the odds of whether A occurred didn't change the odds of whether B occurred. They're independent of each other. Third term that we used. Complement. What's the complement? Ami says that's when I say nice thing. No, Lorenz, we're talking about the mathematical term. What's the complement? If the probability of A occurring equals lowercase letter p. The complement is, the symbol is probability of not A, and it's 1 minus the probability of A occurring. Stephanie, if the odds of you failing math 12 was 0.6, what would the odds of passing math 12 be? 0.4, complement. Okay. And remember, sometimes it's easier to solve for the complement and go 1 minus to get the actual answer that you are looking for. There's at least one question on your test where complement will work way better. You can brute force your way to that least or at most question. You can brute force your way to it and add them all up step by step by step, looking at all the cases. Or you can just clue in, you know what, I'll do the opposite, subtract from 1. Whatever is left must be what I'm looking for. Okay. Uh, what else? Hopefully you remember the whole concept of the tree, or means add, and means multiplying. Otherwise, I think it's a pretty straightforward unit test. No big surprises. Anything else that I've forgotten that someone was wondering about? I don't know yet what your final schedule is going to be. I'm still battling. As soon as I know, I'll email you guys a schedule. I hope to have it for you for Thursday. I hope. <laughs>